Welcome everyone, this is Mundan Dagavan. This video we are going to understand method overriding in Java. So what is overriding and what are the different ways we can achieve the overriding? The first point, why do we need overriding? A method overriding enables the child class to give their own implementation for the method present in parent class. So whenever you go for the inheritance, if you create the child class which extends the parent class, you will be having access for all the methods which are present in child class as well as in the parent class. But let's say we have some method in your parent class and you don't want that implementation, you want your own implementation for the child class. So in that scenario, we will be using the method overriding. The binding is done at runtime. So which means that whenever you have just a statement for creating the object, that will be done only in the runtime. However, you will be checking or you will be having the method overriding only at the runtime, which means that the method will be decided when you run the program, not when you compile it and happens in child class. So since we are going to override the same method, it will be happening in the child class because if it happens in the parent class, it will be the different case. You cannot have the duplicate methods in the same class. Even if you have it, if you need to change something like let's say arguments or let's say the number of arguments that we have seen as a overloading, which cannot be considered as a overriding. Overriding will be just like in child class, you are overriding the exact method which is present in your parent class. Then in child class, we should use the same written type, modifiers, name, arguments, even order should be same, which will be the exact copy as in the parent class. So wherever, let's say, if you use the overloading, that you will be considering only the method signature and the number of arguments, which is the data type. Whereas in method overriding, you will be considering everything, the return type, modifiers, name of the method, and arguments, even order. Everything should be matching with the it's the parent class. So let's say by mistakenly, if you are doing some mistake in order to override, let's say you are just changing your return type or you are changing any method name. So in order to identify that one, you will be having one annotation called at override. It will confirm that you are overriding some method from your parent class. If you are doing any mistakes, it will clearly show that you are not overriding. So you are creating one more method because if you change any one of these, it will be just considered like some other method in your parent class or in your child class. So that should not happen. In case if you want to really override some method and if you want to do it properly, then you can use the at override method. It will confirm that you are overriding exactly like your parent class method. Then static methods. So since we have discussed the static methods are attached to the class level. So even if you create the same kind of, let's say return type, modifiers, name, arguments, order, everything, it looks like same. However, it will not be considered like a method overriding because you are not attaching at the instance level. You are just attaching to the class level, which will be the class loading time itself. You will be having the method, let's say the deciding factor, which method will be used. So even though if you have the same kind of syntax, same kind of written type modifiers, name arguments, everything. So that will be having the two different copies attached to the two different classes. So that also we are going to see in the demo session. So we have discussed all the theory points here. Let us discuss on some more points in practical way by doing the coding. So let's consider this class parent class. So inside you have two different classes, parent and child. Here we have the child which extends the parent class. So it is easier relationship. So what do you mean by easier relationship? So which means that if you create the object, you can just the child object. The child object can be told as child is parent, which means that if you have the child object by default, you will be having all the methods which are present in child as well as the parent will be available to you, whether you use it or not. So that means that you can tell the object is the parent, you can tell the object is the child as well. So it is called easier relationship. Okay, now we can see the structure of these classes. Let's say we have the parent class. It has the normal method public sting show and it will be receiving the sting argument and it will be showing some method called, or let's say some return value like hi, the name plus concatenation of the, this is the parent class. Let's say in the child class also, you will be having the same thing, exact same ditto, public sting show and the sting name, everything looks like same, only in the return statement, you are changing as a child class. So since we are matching exactly like a parent class, you don't have any errors here. Let's say, I will be changing something different here. Instead of sting, or let's say I will be 
removing something or let's say i will be showing show one here you can see so what is the error here so create show one in super type parent so which means that you are overriding some method you are telling show one is the method present in parent class you are overriding by mentioning at an at annotation override annotation you are telling there is some method i am overriding as in the parent class but you are not having any method called show one in your parent class so that's the reason it is telling like create show one method in your parent class so that you can override in your child class so this way we can confirm if you are overriding or not by using the at override annotation so let me remove this one and now we have the same thing so before doing this one so we have seen the structure so another method will be like a public static void setup so whenever you have the setup call from the parent class then you will be having the parent class setup whenever you call from the child class it will be the child class setup but both methods are like a static methods so let's go to the driver class here you can consider there is a object you are creating for the child class and here you can see object dot show you will be calling that method so for simplicity what i will do is like let's go to the parent class and remove this or just comment this entire thing so which means that you are creating the child class and you don't want to reutilize or let's say you don't want to recreate or override the method you you are okay with the parent class method show so in that case what happens is if you go to the driver class again you are creating the child object the object dot show it should be calling the parent class why because the first of all it will check for the method present in the child class with the name show so it does not present so then it will go to the parent class because we are extending the parent class so obviously in the end we will be seeing hi the name followed by the this is the parent class yes hi java learner this is the parent class let's say in later point of time you have decided that you want to override or you want to have your own implementation for the show method so now the same driver file so now it will be giving the child class which means that as soon as you call the show method it will be looking into your child class and you have the method and it will be calling that method if does not find in child class then it will be going to the parent class so these are the details we are finding and another detail to be understood is like the access modifiers so generally let's say if you have the public so it will be the very high level of or let's say very freedom level right so you can access from any level to any level if you go to the very strict level that will be the private so you can have higher level in your child class not lower level for example public is the very higher level so more than that you cannot have maximum you can have the public in the child class or otherwise nothing else for example if i reduce that access level lower than that for example if you don't mention anything it will be the default right so if you try to use that one it will be showing that change the method visibility to public right so which means that you can have the same access level or you can have more than that for example here let's say in the parent class i am just changing to product let's say here i am going to change public here you can see there is no issue why because the producted is the lower level you can have the producted or more than the producted as you know that producted over the producted you will have the public or default and then public right so that's the reason we are allowed to use the public or even we are allowed to use the default so it should be producted so which means that it is actually i told in the wrong way so public producted default and then let's say the private so let me try public so we are fine so which means that you can have the same level or higher that level let's say if i use here default and if i use the producted here so this is allowed because the producted is higher than to the default so just to have a same concept here so or just to have a clear concept we will be having the same like parent class and child class both so let it be public and we will be having the exact the syntax or it will be the higher level okay that's fine the same it might be applicable for the the argument type in case if you are using the child class parent class references for example if you are sending some object you can have the same 
class level or higher object level. So rather than confusing into the argument level, we will be considering whichever the thing you have in your child class, it should be same like your parent class or it should be higher than that. Okay, with this, we have understood. So when do we use the override? Okay, fine. And you can override in child class and you can confirm that by using the at override method. Fine. And next theory point, what we have discussed is binding is done at runtime. So in even in our overloading session, we have understood that will be done at the compile time, where overloading will be done at the compile time, whereas our overriding will be done at the runtime. So what do you mean actually? So as soon as you see this line, child object, let's say child is the type and object is the reference and you are creating the object for the child class. So which means that this new child will be executed or will be created at the runtime only. Then how do you confirm the method? For example, when you compile, what happens is the object reference will be taken and it will be checked which type of it is. So it is a child type. So it will check in the child class whether do you have the show method. Let's say in child class you have the show method, there is no problem. Then it will execute properly. And let's say if you are not having the child class, this method, since you are extending the parent class, then it will be checking in the parent class. So that's the reason I told that it is a easy relationship. So which means that it is directly having access to all the parent class, whether you use it or not. So that's the reason at the compile time, it will be checking. But in runtime, you are creating the object for the child class. So at the runtime, it will be looking at the child class. If it is having the child class, then it will be giving the output from the child class. So rather than confusing here, so let me just show it here, just save it here. Now you can see at the compile time, we are not getting any issues, right? Because at the compile time, it will be looking at the type of the reference. It will be the child class. And in the child class, you have the, let's say, no method called to show, then it will be looking at the extended parent class. It has the show method. Then fine. At the runtime, you will be having the child class object. So it will be going to the child class. It will be looking. If it does not present, it will be looking into the, let's say the parent class. So you can see this is the parent class. Okay, this is obviously fine. Then let's say we will be having the parent class reference. So this is where you will understand more. For example, let's say if I have the parent class reference, and if I have the new child. So you know that at the compile time, it will be looking at the object type. So object type is parent, then it will go to the parent class. It will be looking for the show method, right? So it has the show method. You don't have any problem. At the runtime, you will be creating the object for the child class. Obviously it will go to the same flow. Like it will be going to the child class. It will be looking. But when do you have the problem is, let's say if I have the parent class and you know that so at the runtime only you will be creating the child class. Let's say I have some method only present in the child class. So let's consider the show method present in the child class. And let's consider I don't have any method called show in the parent class. So just to avoid this one, I will remove this override as well. Just consider the normal way. You have some method only in the, let's say the child class not present in the parent class. So now if I just try to create here, so at the compile time itself, it will be looking at the type parent. So in the parent object dot show. So that means that parent reference, sorry, object reference is parent. In the parent class, it will be trying to find the show method. So it's not there. You will be getting the error like it does not have anything. For example, here you can see show method, create a method show in type present, oh, sorry, in the type parent. So in the parent, you wanted to create the show method. Otherwise at the compile time, it will be looking at the parent class only. So Let's say if you create, even if you change whatever may be here. So here you can see you are changing anything. And let's say the parent class reference, parent class object, or parent class reference, child class object. So nothing matters because at the compile time, it will be looking at the parent class. So that's the reason at the runtime, you can have anything. For example, let's say I will just remove these lines. So now you have the show method in both classes, which means that you can have both objects. Right. So for example, let me create a couple of lines so we can understand all the possibilities. So now parent object one. Now let consider two. This is the child reference. And let's say which is not valid scenario. 
so parent class sorry child class reference and child class object which is allowed and child class reference which holds the parent class object which is invalid so we will discuss why it is invalid so first we will go to the first three assumptions or three scenarios let's say the parent class object and parent class reference so which means that whatever the method you have here let's say if it is object one let me repeat this one also let me change it to three fine so if you clearly see here the parent class has the reference or let's say the reference will be pointing to the parent class and the new parent at the runtime you are creating the object for the parent class so we discussed this will be taking at the runtime or binding will be decided based on the runtime whatever the object you are creating so in simple the first criteria what you need to say is like what kind of reference you are having at the compile time what will be checked at the runtime what will be the method you will be picking at the compile time for parent object one and object two it will be checking both parent classes or let's say the parent class have the method called to show we have that so we don't have any issues and the child class it will be checking in the child class whether do we have the method called show or not fine so at the compile time we are fine at the runtime we just focus on the object that you are creating so you are creating the object for the parent so that's the reason you will be getting the output as the parent class and the child object you are creating so that's the reason you will be getting the child object and here let's say child object again you will be getting the child so let me execute this one and see the output see you can see so whichever the object you are creating based on that only you will be getting the method binding so which means that at the runtime only based on the object you are creating based on that you will be getting the method so this is fine so now we have error here so why because the child class reference which are trying to hold the parent class so which is not obviously correct why because let's say you just consider the real time example or let's say first of all we will go with the technical example so let's say the parent class might be having the different methods whereas child class are uh, let, let's say the less number of methods if you try to find it or let's say as we discussed earlier when you try to compile so that time it will be checking all the methods since you are creating the parent class you might be using the different methods which may not present in the child class but at the compile time it will be just try to find in the child class why because we have the reference to the child class so that's the reason this is not allowed or in simple other words real time example let's consider the human class and the engineer class let's say you have an engineer every engineer can be a human so that will be the possible statement but you cannot tell every human will be the engineer because it is a subclass engineer will be the subclass so every engineer can be put it into the higher level of human because the, from the human only you have all the engineers but you cannot tell human all the humans will be the engineer class you cannot tell the reference of engineer pointing to the human class so i think i am i'm just clearing the doubt clearly so that's the reason you cannot hold the parent class object in the child class reference even you can go with like a small vessel and bigger vessel so you can put the small vessel inside your bigger vessel but you cannot do in the other way so now we are fine so now we have understood method overriding enables child class okay fine and binding is done at run time so that's the reason based on the object that you are creating you are getting the output however at the compile time this object reference based on the type it will be checked in the the based on the different reference type for the given method and in child class we should use the same return type modifiers name arguments even order should be same that we have discussed and we have discussed whatever you are using it should be the same level of parent class or it should be more than that let it be the access modifier let it be the arguments since we are using the simple argument here string so we don't have any other chances to explore but if you have the any other object references for example you have your own human class and engineer class let's say here you have the engineer class here you can use the engineer class as well as the human class because human class is higher than the engineer class 
Okay, fine. And next one is override could be used to confirm the overriding in child class. If you have done some mistakes, let it be the method name or return type, anything by mistake if you have done, but you are thinking like you are overriding from the parent class. So that time at override annotation will help us to find that mistake. And next one, static methods could not be overridden though it looks like a overriding. So we'll come to that point here. So let's consider here, both classes having the same signature, like same signature, same return type and access modifier, public static void setup, right? But only the system.out.println will be the parent class setup and child class setup. However, everything remains same. Let's consider the same example here. So I will comment it out this one. Sorry, I'll comment it. Okay, fine. So make it simple. Remove all these things. Let it be one. So we understood that normal instance method will be taken care at the object level. So which means that whenever you have the instance method or overriding method, so based on the object creation, the method will be chosen. Since we have the static method, static method will be looking at the reference type or the class. Since we have the parent type class here, so since it's a static, so it will be pointing directly to the parent class. In parent class, whichever the setup method you have, that will be called here. So let me execute this thing and you can see the parent class setup. Let's say I will be changing to child class. Obviously we could not have the parent class object in the child class reference. I'm just changing here as well. And here you can see, now you are just looking only on your left-hand side because it is at the class level. The reference type is child, the class is child. So from the child class, you will be calling the setup. Yes. So which means that even though the same method present in both the classes, even you cannot consider that one as the override. Even if you try to create override here, you will be getting the error. Here you can see remove override annotation. So that will be the suggestion from your Eclipse, which means that static method cannot be overridden. So that's what we have seen everything, the method overriding and uh, runtime binding and uh, happens in the child class. And uh, in the child class, we have seen what are the different types of access modifiers or let's say higher level access modifiers that we can use it. And we should be using the same type of modifiers and the name method, name and arguments. To confirm that one, we can use the override method, sorry, override annotation. And we can use the static methods for the uh, different method creation, but it will not be considered as the overriding method even though it looks like a overriding. So this is all about overriding in the parent class and child class. And these are the different ways we can create the overriding in the child class. So thanks all. Thanks for watching and have a great day.